Hey guys, welcome back to another Spiffy Guy adventure. We are uh, just leaving the trailhead out at Quiver River. It's been a while since I've been out in the woods. It's been a lot of uh, a lot of hot weather, you know, 95 degree temps, and I'm becoming a three season camper, I think. And the fact that I do not like uh, camping when it's really super hot like that. But temps today are going to be mid 70s with lows of about 50. So it should be a, should be a good day for camping. We're going to see if we can put in a few miles, and then we'll set up shop. And uh, I got a bunch of new gear that I've been checking out, and so stick around. You know, you might find some uh, puffball mushrooms out here in these conditions, but uh, here at Quiver River, you find the uh, the soccer ball mushroom. That's right, full size soccer ball mushroom. I hear these are good eating, but uh, you got to get through the outer skin. We'll, uh, we'll take this with us. I think there's room in the pack and dispose of it properly. I've come towards the interior of the park and I'm uh, I guess took the connector and now I'm on the the Big Sugar Creek Trail and this area I believe last year had all been uh, under control burn there was very little um you know growth on the ground and you could see it starting to pick back up very nice and open though you can see there's a, and I don't know if you can see it, there's a, a couple woodpeckers. I believe they're the pellated woodpeckers and they're flying around on the trail in front of me. It's pretty neat to see. There's a lot of wildlife, a lot of insects out. It's going to be an awesome day. That's the woodpecker. All right, I made it to one of the uh, the four back country camping sites as they are called uh, this one's the um, it's closest to the river or what's supposed to be the river right now creek whatever it's got the big hill and then if water is actually running it does have this little temporary stream that goes down to the creek down that direction it's not a bad campsite I've never stayed at this one it's got a few flat parts for uh, for a tent it's a little sloped um, towards the uh, towards the creek, but uh, probably not too bad that you'd have problems sleeping. But we're going to continue on, and hopefully the uh, the one up on the ridge won't be taken. All right, so I've been rolling for about four and a half miles, and up there is the uh, parking lot for the big Sugar Creek Trail, which continues on that way. Um, towards one of the campsites where I've stayed at before and uh, further into the park. Um, I just came up this way. This is a connector trail. It's a little bit wider. And then this continues on back towards the uh, campsite that I'm going to stay at. And uh, this section over here is, is the horse section. So I'm kind of staying out of that because I don't like horse poop. And the horse have a tendency to uh, mess up the trail. But uh, definitely the trail is overgrown. You can see here, um, I got lots of seeds. And if you look real close, those little tiny dots right there, those are all chiggers. You see right here? 
which is one of the benefits of wearing um, light pants and, and gaiters is it will uh, keep things off your legs so um, I'm hoping the permethrin kill off those guys I'm gonna brush them off too of course but hopefully I don't end up with too many chigger bites <laughs> so I'll take a break here and then we'll keep moving on all right so I took a little break Clean my feet off. I had chiggers all over my toes, tops of my feet. So uh, we'll see how the permethrin did because they brushed right off when I, uh, I brushed off my feet. So hopefully they didn't dig in. Maybe they were all just dead. Because I sprayed my socks and my shoes and my gaiters and my pants all with permethrin. I granted, I did that a few months ago, but I haven't been out much, so I haven't been washing the clothes. So hopefully it's, uh, it's still good. I don't know. We'll see. I might have to look up uh, chigger treatments. That'll be my next search. The day's going all right. I ran into some horse folk back there. They kind of gave me the stink eye because I was sitting on the side of the trail and they stopped further down the trail and the lady was like, are you going to go? You're going to scare the horses. So, I like horses. I think it's nice that people get out with the horses, but, you know, if the horses are that afraid of everything, you know, I'd be a little nervous taking them out on the trail with, and public trails with other hikers. But I'm back into the no horse section, so I don't have to worry about spooked horses and giant landmines. So I'm head on over to the campsite and see about talking about some gear. So stick around. Well, I've hiked over towards the other campsite and unfortunately this is what I was concerned about. There is no water in the spring at all. Uh, none whatsoever. That is a concern. So now I must go into rationing water mode. I was hoping there would be at least water here. There's just a couple black walnuts and a lot of bugs. This is unfortunate. Looks like some recent blow down there. So I've got about a liter and a half of water and it is currently 2 p.m. <laughs> so I have a feeling I'm gonna have water issues. Let's head up to the campsite though and see what's up there. Well I made it to the campsite. This is what it looks like in the summer. Usually I hang my hammock between uh, that tree and uh, the large tree over there. But uh, this time we're, we're moving to the ground. So I've got a tent, we'll talk about that in a bit. I have a feeling I'm gonna set up over here where those leaves are. That seems to be the uh, good tent location. And uh, somebody must have been here last night. There is, uh, the fire is still warm. Put my hand over it, feel some warmth. Now when I pulled up to the parking lot this morning, probably about 10, there was a couple cars leaving. And they have packs in the back. I don't know if they were staying here last night or not, but uh, it's possible. You know, so they probably ran out of water. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the day progresses. It's kind of early in the day to be running low on water. All right guys, so this is one of the new items I got. It's a 900 milliliter uh, uh, snow peak pot. Um, it works out pretty decent. I made a little uh, made a little windscreen for it if I put my alcohol stove. Kind of fits in there. It's a little tight, as you can see, but uh, the windscreen 
itself was for the, uh, the Coleman 900. But what I can do is I can just do one of these things, you know, and just leave it loose around there. I made a little pie tin top for it. I'll do another video with all the all the weights and that sort of thing. So I've been uh, busting up a little bit of uh, firewood, to give you an idea. Um, not too much. There's a down tree off over in that direction. So I went ahead and uh, just dragged some stuff over here. And I used my my Swiss Army saw on those two pieces. But other than that, I just break them by hand. No real knife needed. The fire shouldn't be a problem considering that it's basically still smoldering from the last folks here. And I've been here another two and a half hours and I really haven't done anything to it. I pushed all the coals up underneath the grate to, uh, you know, keep them from, you know, blowing around and stuff. But uh, I don't think I'm even going to need to use a match or, or anything. I'll just, you know, use the existing coals. So, you know, make sure to put out your fire before you leave your campsite because it is dangerous. But other than that, not too much going on. There was the, the crying child did show up here with the uh, an adult in tow. It was like a three or four year old boy and his dad out in a camping trip. I felt sorry for both of them because the kid did not seem to want to be here and the dad didn't, you know, really want a crying kid. So I think their magical little camping trip turned into a uh, horrible reality. <laughs> but other than that, let's give you an idea. I got the, uh, you know, the tent all set up and I'm ready to roll. I got my pack hanging from the tree using my quote unquote survival bracelet. And that's it. I'm just chilling, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my uh, more. I might use my Swiss Army knife and baton up this wood a little bit, just for something to do. And that's about it. So stick around. This is something I was gonna show you guys. Um, I have uh, my brother gave this to me for uh, I believe it was Christmas last year, and it's a little solar panel and a battery all in one. And uh, I just put some Velcro on the back here, and I just kind of clip it on there and lash it on. And the idea is that this is, you can charge it up before you leave. It basically, it's a battery pack, but it has a solar panel on there, so you could kind of charge it as you go. Um, I don't really know how well that works, but, you know, i kind of messing around with it. I put it up here because my camera, the camera that I'm using right now, is a Kodak ZX5, and it has an integrated battery. So if it dies out in the field then I won't be able to charge it. And so I have this and it should be able to give me, you know, another at least three quarters charge or whatever. And the same adapter that fits the camera will also fit my phone. So I have battery backup for the phone as well. And it's really lightweight. So this is something to try out, you know, beats one of those huge one pound solar panels as well. All right, well, we're gonna cook up some uh, rice sides, a little nor rice sides, chicken and broccoli, and we got some smoked salmon to go along with it. Now, this is another new uh, addition. This is the Sea to Summit uh, Alpha Light Spoon, I believe is what they call it. Um, it's like 0.4 ounces. It's one of the lightest spoons out there that I could find. It's long, so if you're doing freezer bag cooking, it, uh, it gets to the bottom of the freezer bag and no spork end to uh, break your freezer bag either. But uh, today I'm going to cook in the pot. We're going to see how it's how it goes cooking in the pot. That's kind of why I got the new uh, the new larger pot is to uh, get away from freezer bag cooking just a little bit. And uh, you know, so we'll see how that goes. The fire started easy. I mean, I just put a couple sticks on there. I didn't even blow on it. So it just it just started right up. The easiest fire is the fire that's already there, I guess. So we're going to cook that up and uh, so far no one else has shown up besides that guy and that little four year old. So it's a nice night though. Surprised nobody else is out here. But it's only 5.30 right now so we'll see if anybody else shows up. Alright so our nice shiny pot is all blackened from the fire. The way it should be. And there's our nice steamy chicken and broccoli. Now, I don't have a pot cozy for this pot yet, so I need to, uh, that'll be something I need to make. But, it's nice cooking actually in the pot, though, because you can really make sure your, your rice gets done. I've cooked these before in the freezer bag, and sometimes they're a little crunchy, because you never really know exactly how much water to put in there, and 
if you don't wait long enough it doesn't rehydrate so but we're gonna eat that up I might take the uh, the salmon out and I might cook it up in the skillet I don't know I didn't bring any paper towels or anything to clean up and I have like I don't know maybe two swigs of water left between now and tomorrow when I hit the car so <laughs> I need to conserve my water well, it's morning time, 7 a.m. It's a little chilly, not too bad. I think I got down to about 55 last night, which was uh, actually kind of cold. I thought I brought a pair of long johns and I didn't. <laughs> and uh, my little fleece top quilt thing wasn't working as well as I had hoped. Not to mention some hillbillies were playing music way over here at uh, like midnight for about an hour. But I'm just packing up. Here's the double rainbow. I'm gonna roll it up. But I wanted to show the uh, the poly cryo um, ground sheet that I got here. I did a video on that, and I had taken the um, taken the tabs off of it uh, for underneath the tent, and it worked out pretty decent. I think it kept a lot of the uh, the condensation off the the tent itself. So I don't know how it will do in the rain. It didn't rain last night. They say it might rain this morning, but so far it doesn't look too bad. So I'm just packing up and uh, me and Wilson, we're gonna roll out. See if we can't find some water because I have like two swigs and that's about it. See, so, yeah, this is my little charger and I charged up my camera last night until, uh, until it was full and this battery was dead. And you can see this green light means it's charging. and I mean, the sun's coming up, but it doesn't take much to get it going. So it's a pretty neat little thing. I'm hoping it's going to work out well. So if you're looking for some sort of lightweight solar charging type thing, see if you can find one of these. Um, I don't know where it came from. Uh, my brother gave it to me as a gift. He got it as a freebie from his work. And I mean, it's like, you know, one of those straight from China kind of products. So you kind of got to look around. There may be a name brand that makes something like that as well, but uh, I'm not sure. Well, there's breakfast, and I was hoping to do oatmeal and use the uh, Snow Peak 900 on the uh, alcohol stove. But that's all the water I have left. And most of my food is all gotten milk, so I'm in trouble. But I'm packed up. I picked up some extra steaks and a little bit of the trash around the campsite area. Uh, it's always nice to do. Bring a bag, pack some stuff out, and that's where I was sleeping. And here is the uh, ULA circuit all packed up. I got a lot more room in there if I need to put more stuff. And there's the little solar panel on the back charging up. and. Uh, Wilson in there. So just to give you an idea, I, I have enough room with all my stuff in there to put a full-size basketball. So it's uh, there's tons of room in this backpack, and uh, if you can keep your base weight lower, you'll be able to carry a lot of stuff. So anyway, sun's up. It's now 7:35, and I'm rolling back to the car. It was a pretty short trip. I thought it was pretty decent. A little cold last night. I'll have to work on my quilt thing. I should have brought my uh, 25 degree. Would have given me a little bit better coverage. My uh, little fleece thing isn't really built that wide for laying on the ground. That was my first night sleeping on the ground in, well, I don't know, about a year. And it was interesting. We shall see. I like the tent. Um, no condensation issues in the morning, so that was good. We'll have to see how that works with the winter. But for the extra four ounces, the liner isn't really that big of a deal. But there's tons of room in it, so I think I'll be using that tent for a while. Hopefully the, uh, the weather will improve and the uh, household maintenance will I guess uh, improve as well so I can get back out here and uh, make some more videos but I certainly appreciate you guys watching and if you have any questions or comments go ahead and post them up and be sure to subscribe because I have more videos coming up for sure 
And uh, until the next time, thanks for watching.